Hey everybody, welcome. Andrew Ames with Golf Academy. As always, a very warm welcome. Thanks for checking out the video today. First of all, an apology. Where have I been? I've been missing in action for what? Last month, five weeks? Not posted any videos on YouTube. Um, just want to tell you why and explain what's going on. Golf in the UK at the moment is crazy, booming. Everyone's playing golf. So as a consequence of that, I've been really busy in the academy. Some people think I'm complaining when I say this. I'm certainly not complaining. I'm very thankful. It's been bonkers. You know, golf's been one of the few things that has probably come out of this COVID pandemic, which has bizarrely benefited from it, which, you know, sounds an odd thing to say, but so many people have taken to golf because it's safe. They haven't been able to play other sports like football or cricket or rugby. Golf came back quite early um, and it's perceived to be a safe sort of thing. You know, good for your health, mental and physical. So there we go. That's why I haven't been posting YouTube videos because YouTube for me has never been my primary business. It's always something I've done just for a little bit of fun when I've got time. So um, I just haven't had the time to do any YouTube videos. So for those of you who've missed me, <laughs> I don't think there'll be too many of you who've missed me. Um, stay tuned. I've got an interesting topic to talk to you about. So, what's my interesting topic? I hope it's interesting. As I just mentioned earlier, golf's gone nuts and it's created a massive surge in people buying equipment, especially on the custom fit route or any route actually. So I work with three primary companies here. I work with Ping, I work with Cobra, I work with Mizuno, and I do a, I dabble a little bit with TaylorMade. Um, let me talk about Ping, because Ping's my primary um, account that I do most business with, and I do a lot of custom fitting. They delayed the release of the Ping G425 iron, picture up there somewhere, until April. So it was due to come out, I think in January, but we're all in lockdown, all the courses were shut, all the shops were shut, so they didn't release it quite rightly. So they released it in April. Um, three months down the road, April, May, June, we get to a point where we can't get G425 anymore. Ping, and this is no secret, you know, Ping will be quite out there and open with this. In the first three months, Ping got through 12 months worth of inventory. So now the Ping G425 iron is completely sold out to like September. They're not going to get in any more stock. And you might think, well, that's ridiculous. Why can't they just get more sets in? And I've kind of learned a lot about how golf manufacturers get their product to market. So it's not just a question. I think Ping heads are manufactured somewhere in the Far East. I'm guessing in China somewhere. I don't know exactly. Ping can't just pick up the phone to their foundry in wherever and say, ah, ping here, we need another 100,000 sets of G425 irons by next Friday. It just doesn't work like that. Apparently you've got to book time way in advance at the foundries that make your product. Now that time is booked maybe a year ahead um, and they make your product and then they ship it and then you've got it. So because ping have been hit by this unforeseeable wave of orders, they're now in a position where they just can't get any more. There's this worldwide shortage, and it's not just Ping that are experiencing this problem. Um, many, many other companies are in exactly the same boat. Mizuno, in exactly the same situation. Though we get weekly emails now, sometimes daily emails from the companies telling us what their stock situation is. So when people come in for a custom fitting, we know exactly what's available, what shafts are available, what grips are available, what heads are available. And to give us an idea, you know, back in normal times, in inverted commas, with Ping, if somebody came in for a fitting for me on a Monday morning, nine o'clock, I'd do the fitting, I'd call Ping, and I'd have those clubs back sometimes by Thursday, Friday that week, you know, three to four day turnaround. The clubs went into production sometimes on the day that we've sent the order through. I've had sets through from Ping in two to three working days, but not anymore. And say it, it's industry wide. Not only are they struggling to get their own heads through from their suppliers, but there's a massive shortage of shafts in the world. I heard a story the other day that Nippon, who makes shafts like Pro Modus, 
had on back order something like three to four million golf shafts on back order, which they were going to fulfill because there's just this massive backlog and demand for shafts. Grips, I went to my supplier where I buy all my grips from here in the UK to try and buy some like tour velvet mid-size grips for a guy who wanted his set, I'd run out of them. I'd go on the website, click on there, gone, sold out. Stop coming back in in September. So this is right across the industry. And it's, it's, it's a problem. It's, <laughs> some might say it's a good problem because it means we've been selling lots of equipment. Yes, we have, but it's now got to this stage where you know, people are coming in for fittings and I'm saying before they come in, look, that club's not gonna be available till September, October. If the clubs are in stock, the lead times are three to four weeks. Um, you know, I say to them, look, it's a lot quicker than ordering a new sofa. So uh, it is what it is. Don't give, the P don't give the pros a hard time. It's not their fault that they can't get the product. Trust me, I'm as frustrated as anybody. When somebody orders some clubs, I wanna get them in as soon as I can and get them sold and get the money for them and make sure the customer's happy. Um, so there's a lot of disgruntled customers out there. It's not the pros fault. It's not even the manufacturer's fault, really. They couldn't have foreseen this, this tsunami of events that was coming. It's just what it is. I think we all learn, need to learn to be a little bit more patient in these situations and, and just deal with it. I mean, if a golf set of golf clubs takes two months to arrive or three months, then not the end of the world, is it? I'm sure you've still got your original set to play. So that's where we are. I'm going to share you, with you some personal information about how I feel about modern golf clubs. When you look at, let's say, drivers, for instance, drivers, the club that most people will change most often. People tend to stick with their putters and iron sets for several years, but people will swap drivers quite, quite regularly. So I often get this. People come in for a fitting. They'll try, say, a Ping G425. Let's say everything's set, I've specced it up the same. It's, say it's 10 and a half regular, like off the shelf, standard set. I know they're coming in for a custom fitting and it's my job to kind of get the right shaft in there, set the driver up with the right loft, add the draw bias or fade bias, whatever needs to be done to maximize the, you know, the backspin rate, get the correct launch angle and just set the driver up so that it's as forgiving for the, for the customer as possible. Let's say you get a golfer coming in who is 24 handicap. He swings a driver at around about 80, 85 miles an hour of club head speed. But let's say this guy or girl swings out to him, six, seven degrees, holds the face open about five degrees and hits a, a huge big cut. Now, some of these draw bias drivers will counteract that, but it won't cure it. And don't be fooled by some of these drivers that say it'll get rid of your slice or your side spin. It might reduce it, but it won't cure it. That's, that's a swing issue. So sometimes I do fittings for people where the swing is just so inconsistent and volatile, it's very difficult to get a good fit because the swing's all over the place. So in that situation, I, I often say to the person, look, the drive you're using is pretty good, it, it's okay. Why don't you just have some lessons instead? Try and improve your golf swing because ultimately it's the person on the end of that golf club that's gonna have the biggest effect. So that's something to consider. But let's say you get to the point where somebody's swinging it quite well, they're delivering some fairly consistent numbers like club speed, launch angle, club face, swing path. When you get three drivers, three or four drivers, which are all set the same, you see very little difference these days in numbers. You know, so if I had a, the latest Mizuno, Ping and Cobra driver all set to the same spec and the golfers delivering similar sort of swing and results, those numbers don't change too much. And we shouldn't be too surprised at that because all the golf manufacturers are having to build drivers to the same tolerances. You know, there's only a certain ball speed that can come off the face. You know, I know they can claim that their driver is the most forgiving and longest and all the rest of it, but I don't think there's one driver out there at the moment that is significantly better than anything else. You know, Callaway, TaylorMade, Ping, Cobra, Mizuno, PXG, you know, take your pick. If you get the right spec, then you've got a great chance. But the thing that's probably going to improve your driving more than anything else is improving your, your swing. So yeah, that's kind of how I see it. A lot of great stuff out there, but it all performs fairly similar. So obviously custom fitting is important, but the swing's more important to me.
So there we go. I've shared that one with you. Um, yeah, good to be back. Good to post the video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, great to have a little chat with everybody out there. British Open starting next week, or the Open, some people like to call it. Uh, the British or the Open, whichever side of the pond you're on, it's called the Open over here. Um, it's at Royal St. George's. It was obviously cancelled last year uh, in 2020. Um, it's an amazing golf course. I've had the privilege of playing Royal St. George's only once with a member um, who played down there. F amazing, got really difficult. I mean, I, play, I didn't play it off the open tees, and, but I played it off the champ, not the championship, but sort of the, the ones in between. Brutally difficult, amazing. I mean, wow, I put it off the green twice. Or was it three times? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hit this putt, got to the top of the slope, passed the hole, trickled out and rolled off the green. And it was like, wow. And there was no wind the day I played it. So get that golf course in 30 mile an hour winds and wow, good luck. My, personally, my favorite tournament um, is the Open, British Open. Um, probably slightly biased on that one. And then it's the Masters. But um, yeah, can't wait to watch it. Who's going to win it? Absolutely no idea. I think I could probably pick 50 people who are going to peg it up next week and win it. The guy which I think at the moment could do quite well, who really impresses me, um, is uh, Xander Schofle. So what amazes me is when American golfers come over to play in the Open, how quickly they adapt to completely different playing conditions to what they would be playing in America, a lot of the American courses are more sort of target golf, you know, heavily watered, not too much rough, a lot of them. And then they come to play on a proper Lynx course where it's like tight lies, they keep the ball lower, they, they play lower shots along the ground um, in conditions that they might not be playing too much. So it, it fascinates me and it just shows you how good these golfers are that they can adapt to different courses and different playing conditions. Really skillful, really good. So who will win it? Who knows? Don't know. And then we got the Ryder Cup to look forward to. And that's another story. But uh, tomorrow night's a big night here in the UK. It's the uh, final of the uh, European Championship, the Euros, and England are playing against Italy tomorrow night at eight o'clock. So I'll be watching that. Uh, can't wait. Hopefully England will, will beat Italy, but it's going to be great. And I would think there'll be a lot of people not arriving to work on Monday in the UK because uh, win or lose, there's going to be some sore heads and a lot of pints of beer consumed. So there we go. It's a good weekend ahead and a good week to look forward to. Great to see you all. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.